And cool. action! What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about the deadlift and how to get a bigger deadlift. So firstly, the muscles use the deadlift. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's many muscles. Yeah, since I mean, it's a compound lift. Everything in your body will be working to some extent, but obviously we're going to focus on your hamstrings, your glutes, your lower back and your upper back. So firstly, the bar we don't have here, trap bar deadlifts, it's, I mean, you could put a photo up of it, but... Um, yeah, the trap bar, it's right here. <laughs> so the trap bar is probably the you need probably some of the less the less mobility to, to get into a trap bar because it's literally you just go down you hold on to handles um, trap bar and then the second one sumo deadlift so sumo deadlift feet wide a lot wider than shoulder width and then hands inside Lightweight. <laughs> so sumo deadlift and trap deadlift, because you're in a more of an upright squat position, you're going to be activating the quads more than you are with the conventional deadlift. So the conventional deadlift is one is the one that we all know and love. Um, no one love. Yeah. I think the conventional deadlift also has very variation, very variations, multiple variations. Grip wise, so you can go alternating grip where you one arm, underarm grip and overarm grip. That is more powerlifting style. Or then you can go for something like that translate into Olympic weightlifting, like the clean, and then you go yeah. with a hook grip. So that's how I always deadlift, unless and you I can get go to strongman as well, where you can use straps basically. Yeah. So I always, unless I go literally to like my one RM, I will always do a clean deadlift. So my arms will be exactly the same width that I would do a clean at. I will hook grip it, tighten my back, and then just stand up. Okay. Any pointers? So with a conventional deadlift, probably the best way to find your starting position is so feet. Firstly, feet. Don't people people tend to have feet too too narrow. What that does is it, it creates more tension on your back as well. Yeah. So I'd say just have a shoulder width, maybe, yeah, maybe just a tiny bit outside shoulder width, shoulder width, and then your hands just about, just outside shoulder width. So I like to do up, over and, and then, so firstly, if you pick it up, and then from here, you're going to go down, and that is a pretty good starting position. So the starting position, you want the bar across the midfoot, so for a starting position. Then, what you want? Fuck, let me just put a plate here. So we turn this bar so you can actually see from a better angle. Yeah. Just so you know, but the garage isn't level, so it's yeah. going down. So yeah, you want, okay, so feet about shoulder width, just outside shoulder width. The bar you want just over the midfoot. And then from here, we're gonna, so you're gonna go down, grab just, so I'll, I'll do both, okay, I'll do both over grab just so you can see. So you wanna be, you wanna grab the bar with your legs straight. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit back like you're doing a, um, a leg press. You're going to sit back and as soon as your legs <laughs> as soon as your shins touch the bar that's when you're going to explode up so you're going to go down get in that position and that's when you're going to go up so if you if the if the bar is too far in front what that's going to do is you're going to have to pull the bar in towards yourself and you're going to be, you're going to use a lot more energy to um, to actually get the bar up because all you want is pretty much just uh, a straight. Want, yeah, you want a vertical bar path. Yeah. You want the bar to literally go up straight, to not have to curve around your knees and not come into yeah. your shins, curve around your knees, come into your hips. You just want it straight as much as you can. And I think to get a 
this is this is one thing that um that Eddie Hall actually says is um what he used to do instead of when he used to train for the 500 kilogram deadlift instead of um so instead of coming up and doing a full deadlift every time he'd go up just to about there because what he says is and it's true anyone because all from here all it is is a hip thrust yeah and anyone can do a hip thrust with larger amounts of weight yeah so instead of using that energy all he did was go up to about there just above the knee and that was it yeah um so that's 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 quite a good way of doing it because then instead of just expending all that energy you're building up your your deadlift you're building up the speed yeah. and yeah because you have to you have to do so that first pull it needs to be an explosive pull because same with this same with squatting it needs to be explosive an explosive um, if you're going to do it very slow it, you need you need some element of explosive explosiveness in there yeah absolutely yeah so to build the strength to to get a higher deadlift explosiveness is definitely one of the big yeah. things there's a, a video of Eddie Hall trying to teach Ross Edgy, for example, how to deadlift. And the biggest thing he talked about was the explosiveness. So he does exactly that, just explosive mm -hmm. explosive ropes, like 10 at a time, just very, very explosive. Um, and that will translate over to strength a lot better than... I mean, yeah, you, you need the, the slow strength, the positional strength you get yeah. from going slow. But you need that explosiveness because you're not going to tempo pull your 1RM off no. the... You're gonna no. want to go. You need to be aggressive, and you need to have explosive pull at the start. So if you're another thing, is you need to keep your back. You need to keep your back in a straight position because you're going to be breaking. You're going to lose all your power if you've got a rounded back. Yeah. Um, so I'd say for a bigger, stronger deadlift, it's definitely, it's definitely. So we'll go into the back exercises in a in a bit. How to actually improve do some upper back because your yeah. upper back, if you don't have a strong upper back, you're not gonna have a strong deadlift because you can't, you won't be able to lock out and get that last little bit. Um, so you want, you wanna be in the right position because you want that bar to travel up with the least amount of resistance and you want that start, that first pull to be explosive because yeah. you need to rip it off the ground. You need to think of pushing the ground, basically like like a, like a, Leg pressure. You need to think about pushing the the ground down with your with your legs. Yeah. So I mean, if you think about the deadlift as even a squat, so your stance would be roughly the same width as a squat. Maybe a little narrower, maybe a little wider, wherever you're most comfortable. But roughly squat width. And you'll first you'll you'll initiate it with your with your legs. You'll drive with your legs first, and only here will your will your back come in. Obviously, your back is obviously from in play from the start. But you're not doing this yeah. so this first bit is just a squat it's the yeah. middle portion of a squat so yeah. that's how you should see it and you're also not going from here and just literally going up and then with your back like that because yeah, you're just no. gonna yeah. you know you're gonna break your back um also you want to keep your so the only thing well different with a squat is squat i prefer to stand with my feet point slightly out, bounded like, out yeah. pointed out um whereas with a deadlift you try and have them quite but you, you want to point yeah. them forward so you're in a more stable position there yeah so that's largely because of mobility to yeah. be honest because you should theoretically speaking we should be able to squat toes pointed forward yeah squat like that yeah. but mobility wise especially when once you add weight you it's difficult to get yeah. into that position and stay upright i mean you can this is easy points toe forward i'm upward I, as soon as I start doing that, mobility starts yeah. coming into play. So I, I mean, there's probably people who that. squat like that, but when you start going to Olympic lifting, no one Olympic lifts with their feet pointing forward. No. no. So you need to be able to get in that position. No, so even, even for me, with the deadlift, I deadlift with my feet pointing out a little bit because that will translate better into the clean. So I always obviously will have, I will always look at this from the perspective yeah. of weightlifting. Yeah, so, so whatever I do in deadlift, it's a supplemental exercise for a better clean or a better snatch. So I will always point my toes out a little bit because in the clean, you don't want your toes point forward because as you jump up, your toes, your feet do this. So they twist in and that's wasted time and wasted energy. So you automatically want them a little bit out. So they, you can just do that as you pull and, and you jump. That just happens. It's not 
that where my feet twist in, if you yeah. know what I mean. So my squat and my deadlift position is pretty much the same yeah. leg wise. For, um, so then uh, do, do, I'd say to get a, I'd say deadlift is one of those things you shouldn't be doing 20 reps, 30 reps on it. No. You need to keep the reps at a low, you know, around, I, I, I probably wouldn't go past 10. No, um, I don't think I've ever gone past yeah. 10. Um, so you want to, you don't want to keep, you want explosive movements and you want to, you don't want to hit your one rep max, try and hit your one rep max all the time. No. Same with other lifts. You want to stay below that, but try and up the reps in like your 85 to 90%. Yeah. So what you want to, th what you want to think about is the next training session when it comes to the deadlift. So deadlifts fry your CNS. It's probably the, the movement that your central nervous system. So it's probably the movement that fries your central nervous system the most out of everything. So you always want to leave enough in the tank so that if you're training tomorrow, for example, you, you're not completely fucked. Uh, I always deadlift on Saturdays specifically for that so that I've got a rest day Sunday so that Monday I'm recovered from that deadlift. But like you said, you don't, even on my Saturdays, I very, very rarely go for one RMs, maybe once a year. Um, because it's not important, really. If you think about it, well, I mean, unless unless you it's go for powerlifting, powerlifting, yes. But in in Olympic weightlifting, um, yeah. it's there's only in the history of the CrossFit Games, I think there's only been one once or twice yeah, that they had that. deadlift as uh, total, uh, uh, yeah, strength total. So that's not important. What is important is being able to do that for reps, and in in uh, CrossFit anyway. Yeah. Powerlifting, obviously, it's completely different. Um, I think in, in the sense we're talking now, we're just talking in general. We're not necessarily talking about sports specifics. So, yeah. But we want to mention these things so that if you are a weightlifter yeah. or a powerlifter that you know, don't just think, okay, cool, they said toes forward, mm -hmm. but I'm a weightlifter. You take all of these things into consideration. We want to touch everything so you're not, you don't come back a week later and say, oh, but you said do this and now my, yeah. my deadlift is worse. <laughs> yeah, I think with deadlifts, the one thing, you should not be getting a bad back from deadlift. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if you're getting a bad back, you need to you need to have your technique looked at. Yeah, so you need to. Yeah, if especially if you're if you're standing with your feet too close, you need to start to experiment with maybe going into a sumo. If you're doing conventional, try and go into sumo. See if that works better for you. Um, I'd say trap bar is probably. I mean. The activation of the quads will it won't be as much with the hamstrings that it still be but not as much as with the conventional and the conventional has got a bigger range of motion will probably be more hypertrophy more gain maybe but then the trap bar deadlift i think is safer in a way yeah so yeah so the trap bar is definitely the safer version yeah. out of it all because the bar will always go up straight because that's the way you'll stand up um it's less cns fatiguing because you're not using as much you're still using the same muscles but not to the but not to the same extent uh, so, for example, your upper back won't have yeah. to work as much because you won't be bent over as far. Yeah. Um, so there's loads of loads of benefits from using the trap bar, but transfer wise, especially powerlifting, do, mm. do you do trap bars powerlifting competition? Only time I do trap bars is really when I try and do for uh, like sprints when I try to do uh, like explosive movements because yeah, so it's easy. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah so transfer wise go for the normal bar, but trap bar is a very good way to start. Absolutely, yeah. a very good, and it's a good way to build that strength. Even yeah. if you, you don't have to just, if you've got a trap bar and you can use that, definitely, if I had a trap bar, I would use it. Mm. I would then deadlift probably a bit yeah. more because it doesn't fry my CNS as much. So, theoretically speaking, I would then have a stronger deadlift, Yeah. but I don't, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, a few things then to, uh, to get to a few upper back or a few accessory work, Especially for upper back, um, lat pull downs, very good one. If you don't, either lat pull downs or you can do pull ups or weighted pull ups. Um, and you can do seated row, that's a very good one. But for us here, what we've got is we've got the bent over rows and single arm dumbbell rows and then weighted pull ups. Those three is the, th is the ones that I personally do. That's um, literally all I do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Um I do very often. I do uh, Jefferson curls, for example, with the kettlebell, mm -hmm. um, because that forces you to pull your upper back up, and it's really good for upper back strength. 
Uh, it's your entire posterior chain. And then I will do straight legged deadlifts, but really focusing on my upper back. Yeah. Um, that's a very good way for me. I, mean, I find. Yeah, good mornings as well. Yeah, yeah, good mornings, yeah. Um, I do, yeah. Yeah, probably do. I do good mornings um, around squat workouts normally. Um, yeah, so. And, but good mornings is one thing that, if you're going to do good mornings, I'd say it's probably better to go between like the 15, 20 rep range and just keep them lighter rather than, I mean, you can see people who get fucking loads of weight on there, but it's better to, especially if you're going to, I haven't done them ever, yeah. do them very low and then just go for high reps. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Right. So we'll show you the three, the bend over row, the yeah. dumbbell row and the weighted pull-ups. Okay. Right. Really so. Alright. Right, so I'm gonna come on a fuss, huh? Oh shit, battery is on per flat. Alright. So bend over row. Keep your arms just outside shoulder width. And then bend over. You wanna squeeze at the top. You don't want to be too low and you don't want to be too high because if you're too high, you're just going to work traps and your upper delts. And if you're too low, you're just going to put strain on your back. So you want to be in that stable, rigid position, just up. Yeah, so if you look at, look at his legs and torso, that's about a 90 degree angle, but his legs are bent. And you want to squeeze, squeeze those lats, All right? So single arm dumbbell rows. Nice slow movement, you want to squeeze at the top. <laughs> right, and I'll do the pull-ups. Cool. Um, I'm going to take some more. I had a bottle of milk. Yeah, cool. Oh yeah, we're going to record. Okay? Yeah, we're going to record. Okay, sorry. I'm going to cut. I think it's going to be definitely better. So we'll stay nice by the arm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely better. I was full. I was full. Right, so, so for the, uh, dog, I can't, dog, yeah, I can't stand, yeah. stand, yeah. So for weighted pull-ups, a couple of ways you can do it. You can wear a vest, you can clinch things between your leg. This is probably the easiest way, so just a normal bait belt, weight belt. Hook through a kettlebell of whatever weight. There you go, cool, so simple. So what I want you to focus on when you do this is look at the bar. So you want to arch your back. So you're pulling into your back rather than pulling just down. Both of that will activate your lats and your biceps. But if you do that, you'll learn to squeeze your back a little bit more. So sun's right in my eye. So really look up at the bar, squeeze your chest to the bar and then down. Cool, so I think we've pretty much covered everything. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, comment them down below. If you want to see anything specific, if you're struggling with any anything specific training-wise and you'd like us to cover that, yeah, let us know. comment down below. If you did enjoy the video and you learned something, smash the like button. And uh, it's one other thing they need to do. Subscribe. That's it. Cool. See ya. Everything changes.